being recorded. So thank you, Megan, for the opportunity to say a few words and share some caregiving resources with the guests at this event. My name is Linda Hodgson, and I'm a volunteer with AARP. Here at AARP New Hampshire, we are focused on the health, financial security, and social connections critical to the well-being of the 50-plus in the Granite State. We carry out our work through targeted advocacy at the state and federal levels, compelling engagement of the 50-plus community statewide, and also serving as a trusted resource for information for our members and the public. In a moment, I'll be sharing some helpful resources with you, but first I want to welcome you to this virtual gathering. Whether you are a new caregiver or an experienced caregiver, AARP is here to support you. Balancing caregiving responsibilities with work or other family obligations can feel overwhelming, even in the best of times. I'd like to stress that it's okay to reach out for support when you need it. Caregiving for a loved one is one of the most important roles you'll play as a friend or a family member, but no one should try to approach the responsibilities of caregiving alone. AARP created Local Caregiver Resource Guides to help family caregivers access key programs, services, and agencies in their community. Everything from health, legal and financial assistance, to respite care. We'll put a link to the resource guide webpage in the chat now, and all you have to do is click, click on your state to access the guide. If you're starting to think about the need to become a caregiver, AARP has a guide called Prepare to Care, which may help you as you start your caregiving journey. Versions of this guide are available in multiple languages, as well as for specific audiences, such as veteran and military families and the LGBTQ community. I'll put a link to that, to the Prepare to uh, Guide webpage in the chat as well. In addition to these great resources, you can find numerous stories, articles, and more helpful information on the AARP Caregiver website. I'll put the link for this webpage in the chat as well. AARP provides lots of opportunities to connect with your community and one another without leaving home. To try virtual offerings like movie watch parties, coffee chats, exercise classes, visit aarp.org slash near you. It's very important that caregivers also make time to care for themselves. We are so glad that you are joining us tonight and allowing yourself to take a break and enjoy a fun activity. Caregivers in New Hampshire have certainly had their fair share of challenges this past year, but we at AARP New Hampshire are here to support you. We hope you enjoy tonight's event and Megan, take it away. Terrific, thank you so much. Uh, they're going, thank you. Linda is a, a tremendous resource and volunteer for the AARP community and space. And I just wanna thank her so much for being a part of tonight's call. We also have some other AARP volunteers that are gonna be helping us answer questions throughout the event as well. So if you have questions, feel free to jump in. But um, it's a pleasure to be here. Tonight, we are going to be painting um, a beautiful spring summer theme of, of poppies. And I have it printed here. And I've also put it into the chat. So in about 10 minutes or so, I'll drop it in again, just in case if there's a few people that are joining in late. Um, so everybody has a full graphic of our, a digital version of our inspiration. But I'll leave this here so folks can see it. Um, that will help you have a visual reference throughout our class. But I want to welcome you all. Um, my name is Megan. If we haven't met yet, um, it's such an, it's so nice to meet you. Um, I'm based in Fairfield, Vermont, and it's a pleasure to work with AARP New Hampshire for these creative classes. And these classes are really a, an opportunity for you just to make some time for yourself, really. You know, part of it is about creating and, and doing something fun and different with arts. But the other part is for you just to kind of unwind and take this time for yourself to decompress. And, you know, we laugh a little um, and you'll learn something new tonight, that's for sure. So I think there's folks here tonight from all over the country, from nearly so many states. I would say over 30 states, right, Linda, um, which is quite fun. So thank you all for being here. I'll do a quick run through of what supplies I'm using tonight. And then um, we'll jump right into the, the art activity itself. So for all of our creative classes that we do with AARP New Hampshire, you can use whatever supplies you want. So if you love watercolors, use watercolors in these classes. If you want to do acrylic paints, use acrylics. I'll always do acrylics typically in these classes, unless we like market it or share it like otherwise different. Otherwise, I'll just use acrylics because it's a very accessible medium um, and it's really easy to learn and, and to practice with. So the paint colors that I have in front of me tonight 
and for all of my classes is I always start with the basics and the primaries, and then I'll teach you how to blend and, and make your own colors along the way. So whether you are new to painting, maybe haven't done it in a while, or you paint often, I'll be here to teach you and coach you on how to blend colors. So the colors that I have are blue, red, and yellow, black, and white. And I have basic acrylic craft paint, so I don't have anything too fancy. So you can always bring whatever you have, really. In addition to the acrylic paints, I have an array of brushes. So the biggest brush I'm using is like a half inch flat tip brush. This is what I use for like coverage areas. If you have like a bigger brush at home like this, like an inch, you can use this, it doesn't matter. So maybe I'll keep this out handy, but just use whatever you have. And then I have a couple detailed brushes for some of these flowers, right? So, you know, four, five, six brushes, that's all you really need. You probably could get by with two or three if you're incredibly talented. <laughs> and then I am painting on an 11 by 14. I'm painting on uh, acrylic paper tonight. Um, you can buy acrylic paper at, at any craft store. Uh, you can paint on canvas panels, which looks something like this. Uh, you can paint on canvas boards. So anything you have, again, works in that regard. In addition, I have a paper towel. Oh, there's some of my Hawaii friends. Hello, Valerie from Hawaii. I was just saying, we have Hawaii friends that join. There they are, Linda. <laughs> and then I have a paper towel for any messes. If you're really messy, grab two. That's always a good thing. And then um, a cup of water to rinse your brushes is an additional supply. So in addition to your brushes, your paper towel, something to paint on, uh, you'll need a paper plate or something to mix colors on. I'm using acrylic paper tonight. Oh, sorry, not acrylic paper. Um, I'm using palette paper. It kind of feels like wax paper. Uh, and you can buy it at the store. But any paper plate dinner plate, acrylic paint will come off of pretty much anything, but something to mix colors on. The neat thing is I love having my palette here because you'll be able to see how I mix and blend colors along the way tonight, which will be really helpful. People really like that. All right, so I'm gonna move this over and we'll get started in just a minute. If you have any questions throughout tonight's class, do not hesitate to ask. If I happen to go a little bit quick, I want you just to always know, go at your own speed. These classes are for you. So always just go at your own pace. Tonight's class is being recorded. So you do you and let me know how I can support you and your experience along the way, okay? Um, the only other bonus supply that I have tonight is a pencil. And sometimes when you, um, when you paint something, sometimes people start with a blank canvas and they just go for it, right? There's a lot of different approaches. And sometimes folks like to sketch out their scene a little bit, which is the composition. Now we're gonna start in the background of our picture and work our way to the foreground. So right now I don't need this pencil quite yet, but if I wanted to, to draw and outline some deliberate flowers, within the foreground of my scene, we could do that, but we're not gonna do that quite yet, okay? We're gonna start out a little easier. Okay, so let's talk about our colors for tonight. So the colors I'll be using for our painting are reds and pinks and oranges and yellows for the sky, and then greens and blues down here for the bottom. So we're gonna start with those base colors for our picture. I'll go ahead and upload the graphic one more time into the chat window for folks to have a quick access to. Perfect. So we're gonna have some fun with blending colors. So I'm feeling more of like a pinky red uh, for tonight um, versus like a red red. So we'll start with the sky part. Um, and we're gonna be blending a variety of colors. So the first thing you can do is, why don't we grab our yellow? I'll put a little bit of yellow on our plate. And I might do two dollops of yellow because we're gonna make an orange. So see, I have a one and two right here. 
put my yellow down. I'm going to take my red, put a little bit of red on my plate. Maybe I'll put a little bit of red below the yellow. Maybe I'll put a little bit of a little bit of red next to this yellow too. So orange is going to be an important color for us. So you guys, you all get to blend colors with me around the way here. So what we're going to do is um, I have one of my bigger brushes. So grab one of the bigger brushes that you have here. I have kind of a one inch and a half inch. You can use either one. I typically use this like half inch brush throughout the class. Just it's a little more approachable. You have a little bit more control. I always get my brush a little wet before I get started. Let me see. Uh, I did upload the image. Let me just do it one more time for folks in the chat window. Oh, it, oh, it says feel the poppies above. Okay, cool. So everybody can't get that. Yeah, you have to just uh, click on the image link. There we go. So I'm going to make um, a little bit of an orange first, kind of in between here. So if anybody's never mixed orange before, you only need a little bit of red. So I'm just going to dip the corner of this brush in the red paint, and I'm going to mix it right in with the yellow. Because for the sky, I'm going to use a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So I'm kind of getting my colors ready before I start painting. It's kind of slowing down to speed up per se. It's pretty. It's kind of a, a lighter orange. You want to just always take your time. Find the colors that you want to use for class. It's really important. Now, yellow is going to be an accent. So I'm not just going to bring yellow on. I'm going to actually start with this orange color. Okay. Now, one of the things I'm going to do first is I'm going to, the how we're going to divide this canvas is the top half is going to be our sky and the bottom half is going to be our green area where our field is. Now, sometimes we draw a line across. We're not going to do that quite yet, but kind of up here in the middle area where we're going to have a sun, you can start to bring in we're gonna bring in some a few narrow brush strokes, maybe with a soft hand. Create a bright spot in your sky. You could put a little water on your brush. We're gonna bring in lots of other colors, but we're creating a little bit of a bright spot for our sky. And with acrylic, and I'm doing smooth horizontal brush strokes. With acrylic, things dry pretty quickly, which is nice. And yes, this is something my four-year-old could do. I know that. Don't worry. Embrace the process here. <laughs> we're just gonna get, we're gonna put a little color down. That's it. All right. And then I'm gonna let that dry. Now the colors I have over here are red and white. Well, these are really bold colors and I really want to, I want to soften them just a little bit. So I'm going to take my white paint, ladies and gents, and I'm going to put a little bit of white paint over here that we can grab from, maybe a little by the yellow, maybe a little bit by the orange. This is about a thumbnail's worth of paint. And it's kind of fun to kind of grab from each swatch because you can kind of manage what you're doing. Well, this is a great time if you have your paper towel, you can kind of get off some of the water, right? Because you don't want it to be too watery. And I'm going to mix a light orange. So I have a little bit of my orange here. I'm just going to grab a little bit of my white and just bring it in with some of my orange. Now, you don't need to do all of your orange. See how I'm doing it on the left side? You can mix your paints any way that you want. I'm just teaching you some tricks along the way, like on how to preserve some of that natural orange, right? Kind of bring some of it in. And you can kind of just bring in and just kind of give it a little bit of edging. You're just bringing two colors or two tones into this lighter area. So we're just adding a little bit of lightness just for a little bit of extra design appeal. See what kind of has two tones? 
pretty straightforward. And then I want you to play around with bringing in some of that other red color. Now, if you want your sky to be a little more pink, make a color with a little bit of maybe a little bit of white, a little bit of orange. A little white will go a long way. You can start to bring in around this color and we'll get darker as we go, but you can start to bring in some of that red and pink into your sky and be playful with your colors here. Megan, I hate to ask you again, but um, there's some people that maybe joined late. Can you put that link in again? Yes, I'm happy to. Be able to. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. So what you're going to start to do is you're just going to start to slowly kind of dress around We'll do some blending around this orange spot, but start to put in some of this pink and reddish sky around. And I want you to stay above the halfway mark. So if you need to do like a line across to say, hey, Megan, stay above halfway, you can give yourself a little bit of a line. But play with bringing in, keep this orange kind of there still, but bring in some red and pink. And I'll bring in the inspiration for everybody. Just a minute here. And it's really about trusting the process. When you blend, you start with a lot of basic colors and then you kind of go from there. So I just uploaded the Field of Poppies file to everyone. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So one of the fun things about tonight's class is playing with blending colors. So you can do brush strokes, left to right, horizontal brush strokes. That's going to be your best friend. <laughs> I want you to fill the whole top of the canvas. We are going to be getting a little darker as we work our way down, but we'll do that after. So you can see how it's a little darker down here. It's because I have, I'm using more of like a red paint down towards the line versus <laughs> like a pink paint. So you can make this sky anything that you want it to be. We're going to be making it darker down towards the bottom of the red. So I just want to mention to a few people that are, there's just a couple of people that are still having a difficult time. So if you click on the lower part of your screen, there'll be something there that says chat. And if you click on chat, then a, a webinar chat will open up on the right hand side of your screen. And that's where this information is. So if you're not seeing it, maybe that's possibly why. It's yeah, there, I promise you, several times. Yeah. So we're getting some just basic colors within our sky here. And this looks like very fourth grader esque. I promise we're going to make it look better. <laughs> just background colors. Trust the process. If you've ever been a part of my classes before, we're just getting some base colors down. We'll have some fun with blending. Don't worry, I promise. So I'm just doing, I'm kind of, I left this orange area here. And then what you want to do is you want to find kind of an intermediary color. So I have my orange. I have my orange and yellows here and I have my pink. So over here on my palette, I'm gonna mix kind of those two colors together and I'm getting this like strawberry kind of color. So imagine, and you can even dip your brush in a little bit of water. This is a little bit of like a watercolor trick. You can kind of soften one layer to another. And see how it's with a really light and gentle hand, you can start to blend one color to another. You can turn your brush on the side. We'll let this dry. We'll bring in some more, but we're just going to have little bits and pieces of this orange come through. Orange and yellow. So this is kind of a bright spot in the sky. I'm using a pink and orange with a little water on my brush. See, I'm kind of softening this in. You can also use your finger to smudge. See it softened that whole space. And you can play with the shape of this. So there's, there's some like clouds, you know, you can kind of add in, you can kind of, the more you cover, 
within this space, you can come in and cover this. So we're kind of reverse engineering the covering of this orange part. So you don't need a lot of this to show, but we did it first just so we had it there. And if you need to add in more, you can. But you can see I'm kind of just slowly filling this in. The nice thing is, is you can always add some of that orange kind of back on top too. So if you wanted to kind of bring a little bit of the orange back on top of the red, look at that. You can easily do that. So this is one part of the class where you experiment a little bit. But we can look at the inspiration for some ideas. You really want there to be little pieces of lightness coming through. Everything else is going to be pink and red for our sky. So you're having pieces of glowing coming through. So you can think of like long, skinny clouds. See how these are like long and skinny right here? So you can reshape these long and skinny areas with the red or the pink. That will give you your shape for your... See how I did a nice smooth line across right there? So I'm using the red and the pink to kind of reshape that orange area, but it still is holding a lot of brightness in that space, which is exactly what I wanted. So I'm using the big brush, but I'm holding it on the side. See that? The more you paint, the more you learn how to manipulate your brushes. You can use a little water on your brush, kind of wipe it off so it's not drippy. And just... Be open-minded and be playful, but see how I've really created these bright areas? You can always come in and play with the oranges in this space. Play with bringing in more yellows if you want. We're going to spend about five minutes here. I want you just to be playful with this space. You can create, a, you can create some brighter sections, like with some lighter yellows. If it's really wet, let it dry. Because some of you might be saying, Megan, this is getting a bit mucky in color. And I'll show you how to bring in some light yellow in a minute. But if you just wanna make sure these shapes of these clouds are kind of long and, and not even clouds. For me, they're like clouds, but they're kind of bright spots that are popping through the sky. It's a little mystic. There we go. So for me, I just had a little bit of brightness. You can have some long, some short. And we'll add in um, a sun up here too. So you can see how I just have a little bit of lightness in the space. And I'm dipping in a little bit of yellow, and just doing a little bit of yellow tucked in. In these classes, you can always switch brushes. And I'll remind you to say, hey, are you happy <laughs> with the brush you're using? Because if not, I, I will remind you to switch your brushes up. You can always switch to a smaller brush if you want to here. But we always start somewhere and we'll come back to it. So the sky is something that we're going to spend five minutes on. We're going to let it dry and we're going to come back to it, okay? So I don't know if it's gonna be scary for some of you, but don't worry, we'll be all right, promise. <laughs> so I'll tell you what some of the next steps are so you can consider it. Um, I'm gonna let this dry. It's not done for me, but I have some nice layering, right? It's good with acrylic to like let it set and dry so you can kind of go back in and add more detail. We talked about adding a little bit of a gradient down here. I'm gonna put a little bit of blue and if you're still working and playing with that section, it is okay to stop for a minute, I promise. I'm gonna put a touch of blue on my plate. And guess what color I'm gonna make? I'm gonna bring in a little bit of blue with my red and I'm gonna make a reddish purple. It's gonna be real pretty. You can see me mix it right here. And this, it's going to be right down here on this bottom line. Now, this is going to give us contrast, ladies and gents. I mixed a reddish purple. It's dark. It's okay if it's dark. I'm doing a single line. 
See that right at the bottom? And this is about halfway. Everything below this line is going to be the green grass in the field of poppies down here. Everything above this line is our beautiful sunset sky, which we're going to keep working on. But what I'm going to do is I just did a single line. You can see how much paint I have on my brush. Not a ton. So I'm going to do another gentle sweep with the wide side of my brush. And I'm going to go back and forth. And I'm going to slowly work my way up. Now, I don't want to go all dark, all thick, right? So what I might do, ladies and gents, is rinse off my brush. See how I went up just a little bit? I'm going to wipe off the water off my brush. There's nothing on this. I'm going to work this paint up. So while this paint pigment is wet, I'm going to be I'm going to be playful and I'm going to bring this and work it up a little bit. And who can see what this is doing? It's creating a little bit of a gradient, isn't it? Working its way up. All I'm doing is brush strokes from the left to the right. I kind of worked my way down to the line. Now I'm working my way back up. One of the things about art is experimentation. See that really beautiful gradient? And that was just starting with one paint of line of paint. And all I did was I washed my brush off. And then with a wet brush, I'm going back and forth. You could get a little bit more water, just kind of wipe off the wet. And you can, we use a lot of water techniques in these classes because there's just so much you can do um, with acrylic and a little bit of water to break down the pigment, move things around, play with your layering. So that's one way. As an artist, you're in control of changing the pigment once it's on your canvas, as long as it's not dried yet. See that really beautiful gradient I created? You could do a little bit more of that if you wanted. What I just did is I put a tiny corner of that right here on the, on the corner of my paintbrush a little bit. And if you want to bring this dark up a little bit more, look at this. I did a small smear. You get a little bit more water. Kind of wipe off the drips off your brush and work that in. So you can be playful. If you want to do that dark to pink or gradient, it's going to look fabulous. So if you wanted to play with that, you could. So typically in these classes, we kind of work on one area, let it dry, come back to it. Because paint and painting and art and the creative process is really a... It's a progression always. <laughs> and if I talk about it, folks will know to to um, to pace yourselves um, and to let things dry and come back to it, right? You don't always need to feel rushed and, and when you paint. So for me, I'm really happy with the gradient. If you see any shining, it's because I'm it's wet and it will dry, I promise. Um, but I love the gradient. You can see it over here really nicely. It's kind of darker at the bottom. I used water and smooth horizontal brush strokes to kind of work it up. One of the next things I'm gonna do is let this dry. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna do a moon in the sky or a sun, it's probably a sun. For me, it's gonna be white because this is fairly dry for the most part up here now. You could do a light yellow. Maybe I'll do a light yellow. Because we're gonna do some layering of clouds on top of that object and you can position the the sun off centered or centered and you can just start with a circle it's going to probably get bigger so start small if you have something round near you and you want to trace it no judgment zone you can totally do that but we're going to do a couple coats so we'll let this dry So I'm just doing a nice sun in the sky. For me, it's uh, like a whitish yellow and it's gonna have brush strokes in it, don't worry. Just try to get the shape right and then we're gonna let it dry and come back to it. There we go. And I'm gonna put some pretty clouds coming on top of it with our light yellow after. So I just kind of have, it's like a half dollar size. I'm just gonna let it dry. So if anybody wants to put, and if you want to do a bigger sun, you can. 
I really like that, like light yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's the contrast, right? It's the it's the dark, beautiful red beaming sky with some of these lighter elements layered on top. It's gonna look really pretty, and they're, all, they're it's all gonna complement and match our poppies, which is really nice. So again, I'm being patient. I'm acknowledging the process of we're going to let this dry, right? But this whole step we're working on is we're working on our sky. We're doing one little bit at a time. Okay, I'm going to stop touching it. <clears throat> my, my, my own more enemy here. I'm going to stop touching it because I want it to dry. Imagine that. <laughs> And I like talking about that out loud because most of us need the reminder to stop touching it. <laughs> I know it's so hard. <laughs> I've done hundreds of virtual classes, Linda. I, uh, I I know what folks need to hear. Like if anyone needs to be reminded to, to sip or hydrate, I'm here to remind you of that as well. I have water tonight, ladies and gents. Very exciting. <laughs> I'm staying hydrated here. So um, I have a sun painted in. I'm letting it dry. Uh, I want you to be happy if you have a gradient going. I want you to be happy with it. Um, but I will keep an eye on the clock just to manage, help us manage our time. Um, I'm going to give everyone um, a few minutes to play with this gradient. Again, if you wanted to make it darker, you could. We're going to have some flowers and stuff come up here. I might make it a little darker down here at the bottom, but just use your own eye. You know, tonight's class is not about copying me. It's really about you following, trying something on your own, following your own intuition. I know many of you appreciate the structure of like following along, which is, we all need that. But I, I'll always encourage you to take risks and I'll, I'll let you know what, what, the, what the big risks are, what the little risks are here in our classes and um, encourage you to follow your intuition. And if you have your own idea, Bring it in, and you might do that with some of your poppies below. You might bring in, um, I don't know, you might bring in other flowers below. Those are all the things you get to think about. But for me, this contrast here in the middle of the picture is important. So for me as an artist, I'm making a choice to have enough of this contrast for it to stand out for me. So Megan, someone is asking if you have an online source that you might be able to share to purchase uh, frames that are half inch or thicker. Just some suggestion you have if there's something online or. Yeah, so I don't know. I use these frames in my studio here. I'll grab one really quick and show you. I buy these at Michael's. I have them all around my studio. I don't even know. I probably, actually I have a ruler right here. Let's see what the measure what the distance is. So this is an inch. This is an inch frame here. I buy these at Michaels. Um, I am not sponsored by Michaels. Um, <laughs> I buy these at Michaels. You can get two packs for like ten bucks or like fifteen bucks. And I like them because I buy the eleven by fourteens, and I paint most of my artwork in my classes in eleven by fourteens. So I can swap in my artwork easily to kind of showcase my favorites in my studio. Um, or, you know, when I'm when I'm done looking at one, I can kind of flip in another easily. So I would encourage, like, those are a really affordable thing to do. Maybe if you like to paint often, you can have a little wall, you know, in your office or in your hallway to kind of circulate things. It's always a fun idea. But that's uh, what's top of mind <laughs> for right now. Great. And then one other question, um, someone said, could you just tell them the, what you did to get the colors for the moon again? And how did you make it radiate? What magic did you use? Oh, magic. Wow, that's quite a compliment here for a Wednesday. Um, so um, the colors I used for the moon was this color right here. So I have yellow and a little bit of white. So you can see how faint that is. That's the color I used right here. So I really just took a little bit of white and I put a little corner of uh, yellow in it and I mixed it and it's going to stand out a lot more. Again, I'm being patient and I'm letting it dry. And so in about two minutes, I'll go do a second coat on it. Um, <laughs> perfect. And then Linda had a question around using stretch canvas. Um, I don't have a good solution for stretch canvas, Linda. 
Um, you could like go into Michael's or a craft store and say, hey, what are your solutions for this? You could even, I don't know any like thick base. You might have to do a custom frame for that. Um, I know that I've seen in the past, I was gifted once um, like a, a blank frame that you could kind of put canvases in. I don't have that resource link, but if I happen to find it, um, we can share it in the future. Yeah, but when you have stretch canvas, um, you kind of have to take your canvas with you and see what you can find in your local stores. You could probably Google something too, I'm sure. All right, I'm gonna stay on track here. Thank you all for your questions and keep them coming. I'm happy to answer them for you. I want folks to be happy with, again, the gradient in the sky. I'm adding some contrast down here. I just wanna be happy with this the transition of color. So I'm just gonna take another minute. I mean, again, I'm using a little red. I'm using a little purple in this space. And I live by these horizontal smooth brush strokes. I use this in almost all of my classes. I put a little water on my brush, ladies and gents, and I just smooth this out. It's like I'm dancing um, nice and gently. I'm gonna do more work up here for this glowing area. We're spending a little bit of extra time in this space just because it's worth it, in my opinion. I know some folks operate a little more slowly. So we're just kind of, we're not rushing through this top part because it's important. It's a really beautiful part of the composition. Something we can all kind of get lost in a little bit. And I'm here to take you away for an hour and a half or so. So I think I'm happy with that gradient. You can see the dark to light contrast, right? All right. I'm gonna be brave and do a second coat of paint on my sun. Two or three coats are all you should need. Look at that second coat. See how it's a dried underneath and it's sticking nicely. That's exactly what we wanted. Sometimes you can use your pinky to stabilize your hand. And yes, my son just got a little bit bigger. God help me, these things happen in these classes. That's why we start with small objects because they tend to get bigger. It's all right. We embrace the growth of our son. And I'm just, sometimes I use my pinky to stabilize my hand, but just take your time. Nice smooth brush strokes. Just do your best. I know there's many perfectionists out there where you want it to be just right. Trust me, no. Okay, I'm gonna let it dry. It's better, right? Good so solid second coat. All right. So I'm gonna let that dry. Now, because we're doing layers over our sun, like lighter layers, I want to make sure our sun is happy. So what we may do here to keep things moving is we're gonna come down here and just get some of our green grass in this space. And I'll move this up a little bit so you can see the full bottom of my canvas. Perfect. So we may like let the top part dry, we'll come back to it but I wanna keep us moving to get some of the base coverage down here. And this is gonna be a lot of fun, okay? <laughs> Lots of perfectionists. Ladies and gents, I hear you, it's okay. I accept you for who you are. <laughs> that top part makes it go on vacation there. It's so hard. Okay, so we're gonna slowly transition down here to the bottom. We're gonna do blues and greens for our grass area. Um, we're going to do some base coats first, and then we'll do lots of grass blades on top. So we'll do a single kind of coat, maybe some gradient fun colors, and then we will um, do some specific grass blades on top after. So I'm going to make sure my big brush is clean. If you have multiple brushes, high five for you. I do, but I'm just going to be patient and kind of use one brush at a time. And one way to check and see if your brush is clean is using your paper towel to check. I have like a little bit of red residue, but I'm okay. And we are gonna make the most beautiful bluish green colors ever. It kind of reminds me of like an emerald green. I actually have a very similar color. This is a, a recent painting I did. See these beautiful emerald greens? It's like some of these are dark and some of these are light. 
we're going to incorporate some of these colors within this bottom area. But they're going to be blues and with blues and green tones. So the way that you make that is by using blue and a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to mix those for you. So one of the things you're probably thinking is that, Megan, I have the most basic paint colors. And look, so do I, right? That's why I love using these basic paint colors, because I can show you how to mix really pretty colors from these basic ones. So I have some blue on my plate. I'm going to take a small dollop of yellow. And that's just like a bright sunshine yellow up there. And I'm just going to put it over here near my blue. Now, to make green, typically, you mix yellow and blue together. Well, I'm going to just take a little bit of the yellow on my brush and I'm just going to start to mix it with a little bit of my blue. And I'm just going to slowly bring a little yellow in at a time and look at this beautiful green I just created. Isn't that stunning? So a little yellow will give you a beautiful bluish green color. See that? So pretty. So now the trick is, and I'm going to repeat this, you have to make enough of it so you don't run out. <laughs> okay. I'm sure some of you have been in the position before was like, oh, Megan, I didn't make enough of it. I'm kicking myself. So make enough of this color so we don't run out of it. See how much more blue it is because I brought a lot more blue in. No big deal. And I'm kind of trying to pull it all together so it's in the middle here. See, I'm kind of creating like a little pocket. I'm kind of bringing it all in to the center. And I need more yellow, don't I? So I can just grab a little corner yellow. Because I want it to be kind of green-like. So this is where we are patient. And we breathe and we find a color that we like. Oh, that's too much yellow. Let's see. I think this is one of the reasons why I can never get my husband to paint because he just, he doesn't know how to slow down enough here <laughs> to mix the right colors. God bless his heart. Uh, but sometimes, and it takes the instructor, right, to remind you that it's okay to take an extra minute to find the right color, right? Okay, so I have this really pretty, it's kind of dark, right? So if a color is ever too dark, you can just take a little tiny scoop of white and you can always add a little white in. A little white will go a long way, but I'm just gonna show you how you can easily light in a color. And a color is called a hue in the art world. See how I just lightened it up a little bit? Now this is okay, this is a good starting color. Contrast in the background is good here. See how it's because it's darker. So then, ladies and gents, you can just fill, like you can you can do this this bottom space any way that you want. You can kind of like fill it in like there's flowers down here. Like I'm just being literally footloose and fancy free right now, because it doesn't matter. Um be careful as you kind of like come up to this top line. Maybe you just kind of do a little bit of an overlap, but this is all just base color. So you can fill this in any way that you want. See this? Have fun. It's liberating just to kind of like see what happens. Because these are all vertical stalks down here, right? We're going to put in a lot of vertical. Now we could just do this. We could paint this whole area horizontally as a solid color. That's totally fine too. But this is might add some texture. So this is a, a risk-free experiment, if you want to try it, of how to fill in this bottom space. And we're going to fill in the entire bottom space. I don't want to see any white down here. Because we're going to, guess what, put a lot more layers on top. You probably guessed that. And if you wanted to bring in, I may or may not have run out of paint, everyone. Just admitting that, because I'm an honest soul. I'm gonna mix a little bit more. I need a little more blue. You can bring in a little bluish green down here. Like you can kind of be playful. I needed more. I went a little crazy. So let's make a little more. 
but you can have some blue, more blue areas. You can have some more green areas. You can make it lighter or darker. Have fun with it. But we're just, we're doing base coverage, okay? We're not going too crazy. Base coverage just means cover the white, okay? You don't have to do specific uh, shoots or forms for your flowers yet. This is just coverage. And this coverage is, it's just not as boring as doing horizontal brush strokes or vertical brush strokes. I'm just kind of filling it in. But you might be able to see some of this behind after, which is kind of fun. Textured field look in the background. And I'm not doing straight up and down. I'm kind of doing a little horizontal here and there. And I'm just using this big brush. I'm doing a little bit of um, kind of like gentle overlap with my dark purple line area. I'm just using the tip. I'm using the flat side of this big brush. And I'm just kind of just coming up, just adding a little soft kind of grass-like texture that's just overlapping. And that's perfect for what we need here. So have fun. Don't forget to breathe. Some of you may have stopped. Don't forget to smile. And again, a big thanks to AARP New Hampshire for having us tonight. We would not be here without them. Everyone's having fun so far. There, see how it's like fun grass-like texture is just happening. Art happens, right? And you give your space the opportunity just to be playful and not overthink it, especially with a little guidance from an instructor. Some really cool things can happen. Just about trusting the process and seeing what happens here. All right, so I'm my goal is to cover all the white. Should be your goal as well. And I'm just doing a really slight overlap with the top here. And we'll come in there with a smaller brush too for some more like specific grass-like texture. So if you don't, if you want to switch brushes and like do some like grass-like texture kind of coming up on the top, you can. I'll zoom in here and I'll show you what this looks like in just a minute. But I'm just trying to get all my white covered in my grass area. And it's the whole bottom half. And this looks fun. It looks really cool. It's okay if your colors are a little different. Look how pretty this is. Like, that's a really cool background for a field. And all of you could do that. That's nothing fancy. So I'm going to let it dry. But I want you to take your time. I'll show you what the overlap looks like here. So you can still see some of that line. That's okay. Um, I may come in with like another brush, like a smaller brush. Like this is like a little, it's kind of like a half inch maybe. But you can come in and just kind of play with doing like a second bit of coverage. So it's kind of a second coat and it'll help cover up that line. So again, it's just having patient, patience to kind of bring one line over another. And I'm just doing soft kind of sweeping brush strokes kind of going upwards, kind of like there's long grass in the distance. That's kind of what this looks like. Megan, you're getting lots of uh, thank yous for your patience. Oh, cool. I'm like not even paying attention to the chat. Awesome. Oh, awesome. Lori, I'm so glad you're enjoying the class. Garcia, thank you so much. Yeah, be sure to sign up for the May class, folks. It's going to be fun. I'll give you a little sneak peek. Let me see if I can find and look and see what the May class is going to be. Get you all excited here. Oh, the May class is a goat with flowers like on its head. It's like a floral arrangement on the goat's head. It's so cute. It's like a smiling little goat. It's going to be so much fun. <laughs> so that's our sneak peek for the New Hampshire class. It's going to be awesome. And the, T the ARP team can confirm the, uh, the May date as well. Um, let me see here. I actually have it right here. The May class date is May 8th at 6 p.m. There it is. Thank you so much, Ashley. 
Ashley is one of the fearless leaders in charge behind the scenes. So um, you all should praise Ashley for her support and these creative classes for y'all. But Mary and those ladies are also big, big, big advocates as well. And be sure to check out the AARP uh, New Hampshire resources that they've listed because they're phenomenal. Like I'm really, I'm continue to be impressed by the, the resourcing that AARP New Hampshire has to offer. So be sure to check those out. All right. So for everyone on the call, we are, we have some green grass down here and it's drying and that's, and it's a field. So as long as you have base coverage, I want you to just get base coverage and stop touching it because we're going to go back up to the top. Okay. <laughs> Trusting the process. I know it's hard, right? Sometimes we need to be told to just trust the process. At least it's been helpful for me in the past. <laughs> With art, it's tricky though, because it's you don't it's hard to trust when you just don't know what to expect, right? All right. So for me, I am gonna do, I'm shifting back to the top. I'm letting the bottom dry. I'm trusting the process of letting the bottom dry will add more to the bottom. Um, I am gonna keep an eye on the time and keep us moving. We're doing good. Um I'm just gonna do one more quick coat. I want this sun up here to be really full in color, but then we're gonna do some overlapping. We'll do a little bit of our final detail work for the sky next. So I want you to have be at a good point where you can let the bottom dry and we're gonna switch back to the top. Okay, I think I'm just gonna say I'm happy with the moon area. Oh, sorry, the sun, sorry. Um, and what I'm gonna do is my, one of my final steps for the top part is I wanna be happy with how all these colors are kind of blending in. I have some funky patches of red over here, which I'll fix, but I, I want for folks to consider to add in some additional lighter yellow areas that are like hazing over the sun. So the part that I'm speaking to is in the inspiration. Sorry, this is like, the lighting is really weird. So within the inspiration, you can see that there's these lighter hazes that are kind of coming over. That's what we're going to do now. And the color that I'm gonna use for that is, I have my light, light yellow here. Well, I don't want it to be too light. So I'm basically gonna make kind of a, I don't wanna say a shade darker of that, but it's not gonna be that light. So I'm just making, I'm adding a little bit more yellow. So see how this color here is a little brighter yellow than that. I'm gonna use this color. And the white helps cover up like the background. So you can see this is my bright yellow. This is like yellow with a little bit of white. And then this was like the white with a little yellow. So it's my sun. It's kind of an intermediary color. And I want you to find this color, at least start somewhere and find a small brush where you're gonna be in control of your brush strokes. And we're gonna think long and lean, okay? These are like, phasing clouds that are going to be tucked in. And I want you to do a little bit of paint management. And that's a very technical art term <laughs> that I have made up. And it's about managing how much paint is on your brush. Okay. So I don't have a ton of paint on my brush. It's just enough. And I'm just going to do, I want you to, we're going to do a, a horizontal brush stroke. I'm moving my hand back on my brush. See how far back my hand is? And I'm gonna do kind of like a line that goes across the moon. And I'm just gonna, it's a little bit of a haze. So you can be a little light handed. See, I'm creating a little bit of a haze and you want it to be as straight as possible. Let me see here. Think long and lean. You can put a little bit of water on your brush. Water's really helpful. Put a little water on your brush. It, it will help oh, tremendously. Look at that. You're gonna go right across your moon. And you're gonna make it a little piecey. So I'm putting a little water on my brush. See that it's a little watered down. You can go up a little high, go down a little low. And you want the ends to be long and lean. So I put a little bit of a haze. I'm gonna do a little bit of that up here. Now I can complement some of your other areas. This is just a little bit of extra brightness in your sky. 
So this is optional. You don't have to do this, but I'm just doing some long and lean. Water on your brush is magical here. Gentle hand, kind of like you're running a feather over the tip of somebody's nose, nice and soft. See that glow that it created? And I'm using just the tip of the brush and I'm not pushing down hard. And I'm leaving some of the red contrast. I'm gonna go below the sun and I went above the sun. See how it gave it a beautiful effect. Let me turn this down a little bit. It's quite pretty. Let me turn my light down to see if that helps. There you go. That's a little bit better. So I turned the light down on, on my camp on my video a little bit for you to see some of that contrast. So I want you to play with how like light you want that to be. And how the light and the dark contrast. So that's for you to play with. That's awesome. It's really cool. Okay. So I'm going to give everybody, just take two minutes. Don't overdo it. It's kind of one of those things where you, you give it a shot, you think about it, and then you can say, I'm done, or I'm, I'm not going to touch it anymore. You can always come back to it because we're not going to put anything above it. Okay. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time there, but I wanted to show you that as a little bonus. Okay. Because we're going to move right down and we're going to do the, the poppies next. And this is where if you have a pencil, you could do a little sketching. So I'm going to give everybody, I'll keep an eye on the clock. I'll give everybody two minutes to finish your sky. I want you to be happy with the whole top. Okay. So I'm going to be polite. I'll keep an eye on the clock. We're almost at the top of the hour. So it's perfect. I might play around a little bit with some of my blending on the edges here. I talk a lot about mindfulness in these art classes and it's not the breathing kind, which I fully support, which I've talked about. <laughs> it's more so the, um, the pausing and the reflecting of what else do I want to do, add or change while we're all here together, right? Way too much red paint. All right, so I'm just going to do, it's like a, it's a time to just kind of personally tweak or modify kind of what you have here. So for me, I'm just, I'm helping with the blending of this, this patchy area. I'm just kind of working in my color. So I'm happy with where I'm at here. So you can make it as bold or as bold in contrast or as smooth in colors as you wish. Okay. As pinky or as red as you wish. I love the combination of the pink and red personally. Look, I just brought a little bit of red contrast in there. Isn't that look nice? Really pretty. Some red just kind of flowing into the space. That was a happy little accident right there. All right. But that's one of the reasons why we do layering, right? We take our time with acrylics. Because when we first started this sky, it looked like something my son would paint, which was just, you know, red and yellow and orange. You all probably were thinking like, where are we going with this? Who is this teacher? <laughs> but um, all good. Um, I do have a question from Esther. The, my son is not round. Can I blur the edges? You can totally blur the edges. Use a little water on your brush with a little bit of that light yellow. And you can do some like circular smudging, like going around with some water. And you can do, um, it will soften the edges. You can even use your finger, Esther, to soften, to smudge it out too. That's a really cool technique. All right. So we're at our two minutes for the sky. That just flew by but I'm gonna keep us accountable here. And we're gonna to shift to our poppies. Now, for our poppies, I'm gonna move this up so everybody can see the whole bottom space here. If you wanna take a couple extra minutes personally and tweak your sky, you can, but I'm gonna come down to do poppies. If you wanted to freehand your poppies with a paintbrush, you are welcome to do that. If you would like to boost your confidence and grab a pencil, um, you are welcome to do that as well. Um, 
Typically, you can't see my pencil in these classes. I'm going to scroll down here with my camera. Megan, I just have to tell you, some people are saying this is so much fun. Oh, good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. That's why we're here. <laughs> That's why we're here. All right. So um, sometimes in these classes, I use a Sharpie, which is really scary. Um, but I do a Sharpie so you can see my lines and my forms. I do not recommend using a Sharpie at home, um, but it will help you see the forms of my flowers. And this will allow you to either hand paint your flowers sporadically, or it will allow you to use your pencil. Um, pencil, fact, when you use pencil on top of acrylic, you can actually erase what you don't use. Like if this is dry, you can come in and you can erase it after, which is kind of neat. Um, but I'm gonna use a Sharpie just so you can see my forms. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show everyone this. Um, what do we notice about the composition and the forms of these flowers? Some are bigger and some are smaller, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, between six and eight larger poppies that kind of frame kind of like a U shape. And then we have little poppies tucked in here, right? Kind of towards that horizon line. So what I'm gonna have you do is I want you to think of the poppy form, which they're kind of more lacy and florally on the top and they're a little more like structured on the bottom. And we're going to, if you wanted to draw with me, you can. If you wanna just paint them, you can. If you're gonna paint them, use like a, like a dark red or a red color. And then we're gonna bring the lighter tones on top. But I'm gonna do some sketching. Your flowers should not be, um, you can put them directly at the bottom, but I'm not. I'm going to leave about two inches here. And I'm just going to start kind of drawing and sketching some of these, these poppies. So for me, they're a little more rounded on the top, sorry, on the bottom. And I'm trying to be loose with my hand with regards to the flower forms. So that's one. And, and if I wanted to cheat and kind of do like a little bit of a, like a stem coming down, I could, that's fine. I'm gonna put green paint on that. But what I want you to practice with is I want you to do, I want you to turn the shapes of your poppies. I want you to turn the heads. So I don't want them all to be straight up and down. I want you to turn some to the left and turn some to the right. So this one's kind of a little in the middle. I'm gonna turn this one this way. So I'm might do some wider, this is outlines of the petals. Maybe this one is gonna be turned a little bit this way. See how this one's turned to the right a little bit? And I'm leaving space here in the middle for my little poppies. I'm not gonna draw in my little poppies, I'm gonna just paint those in after. And if you wanna do your stems, you can, you can use your pencil to do your stems, that's totally fine. But I'm just going to tuck in, again, leaving open space here. Try to be raw with some of your edging. See how I'm being really, I don't want to say shaky, but it's just a natural edge of a petal. And again, do not use a Sharpie at home. <laughs> I'm doing this because I'm brave and I want you to see my lines. So I'm doing one, two, three. I'll do a fourth one in the middle here. And you can you can vary your sizes, it's fine. But the hardest part of doing flowers is trying to make them look natural. And we when we see, you know, rounded this and rounded that often. So just do your best with trying to make them natural. It takes a lot of practice to make flowers kind of look natural. But you can see how the stems are long on the bottom. You see that? And I'm leaving space in the middle here for my mini poppies. So I'm spacing them out and doing some high and low. I'm gonna do another high one over here. I love being brave for you all by using a Sharpie. It's scary, but I don't mind doing it for you all. 
if you've taken my classes before, I, I do show up brave on some things. Like when we paint animals, you have to just be brave and just go for it. <laughs> so I did one, two, three, four, five here. And then I want some that are overlapping the sky with the sides of the fields. Now, if you have a pencil, you can erase what you're doing. You should feel so special with that you have that pencil in your hand. So far, I'm okay with my my flowers, but I'm doing an overlapping one here. And I'm going to have a long stem kind of coming. So that's a flower up there, believe it or not. I'm going to use the paint to make them look more like flowers, I promise. And then I have a cool like upside down one kind of hanging out up here. So let's see if I can do this one. Kind of like a flower that's bending over. Kind of like an upside down tulip, it looks like. That's kind of pretty. See that? I'll make that look nicer in a minute here. If anybody has to leave, yeah, don't hesitate to um, go if you need to. And I'll tuck in another flower. Yeah, we're giving everybody the recording information. Perfect. Thank you guys so much. So I have a, a variety of flowers here. I'm going to uh, let them dry uh, while I'm using Sharpie. So they'll be dry in just a minute. And I'm going to start painting them in. So we'll do the little poppies after, but this is the fun part. So once you're done drawing, you can start painting these in. Finding a brush that you like. Um, I'm going to use um, a reddish orange color to fill these in. Um, we always start with the darker colors because we're going to do lighter colors on top to highlight the edging. So find a brush, any brush that you want. I want a brush. This is... um. This is kind of a medium sized brush. It's not really medium, it's pretty small, but I'm just gonna use like a reddish pink, whatever I kind of have down here. I'll zoom out so folks can see what I'm doing here with my colors. And this is a little crooked, I'll fix that for you. There we go. Perfect. And then I'm just gonna start filling these in. Um, one of the things that's helpful is when you paint red on top of green, it's not gonna cover it up that well. So I, I would use a little bit of, of a white base, even if it's like more of a pink at first, using a little bit of a white base color will help cover up that green. So even if you start with a pink flower, that's okay. Cause just know it's gonna dry and you can do another coat on top. So even if we all start with a bunch of pink flowers, that's okay. Just get base coats on all these flowers that you just painted. And you all know how quickly acrylic dries. So I'm using like a pink here because that white paint, see how it nicely covered? So I want you just to, you don't have to spend a ton of time, but just start filling in these flowers and kind of hold some of those funky edges that you drew in too, like those natural, ridges and you can always come in with more detail after but if you can get any of those kind of fun nooks and crannies of edges you can but this is just a base coat of these flowers just like the sky was so they might look boring at first but it's the evolution of these forms that will bring them to life and in my classes i always teach a few depth techniques here and there that will allow you to bring any object to life using lighter and darker colors. So I have depth techniques that I teach in all my classes. And again, I want to thank you all for being here. I hope you're having a great time. And again, a big thanks to our friends at AARP New Hampshire for having us. We would not be here without them. Be sure to check out their resources that they've put in the chat throughout the class as well. Yeah, and just to remind everybody that on May 8th at 6 p.m. That's the next class. Yes. We're painting a friendly spring goat. It's going to be fun. Animals have a lot of personality. <laughs> so I am just filling in each of these flowers, just the big ones. All right. Don't forget to breathe. If you're sipping, ladies and gents, don't forget to stay hydrated. Very important. I'm here to remind you. <laughs> Thank you, Felicia, for being here. Thank you, Jamie. Oh, 
right. I'm just filling in all of these flowers, letting them dry, and then we will shift back. And just to remind folks, we do have the recording at HTTPS www.youtube.com at AARP New Hampshire dot one. I'm sorry, not dot one, just one. And that is in the chat. But for anybody that had challenges in the chat, that's it. Yeah. I'm so glad you're having fun. Um, Mary, you had a question around a link where you can find other classes that I teach. Um, if you go on to, I teach three monthly classes on Patreon um, every month. Uh, and I have like, I have fun giveaways and stuff. Um, but on Patreon, it's Painting with Megan. And at the end of tonight's class, I'll kind of bring this out again. If you want to take a picture of my contact info, I'm happy to answer. If you have any questions around like supplies or anything, um, definitely don't hesitate to reach out. I love being a resource for, for AARP members. So let me know how I can support you. But Painting with Megan on Patreon is where you can kind of follow my additional classes. But um, I absolutely love partnering with AARP New Hampshire. Um, I offer different classes in both places. So you kind of get a little bit of this and that. But we always do really fun ones here. And you also get to hear about all those fun and helpful resources that they offer as well. And Ashley and Mary and um, Linda and team keep us informed of all the most important stuff for you to keep to keep you kind of in tune with the latest and the greatest with AARP. So I want everyone to focus on painting these flowers in. You can see this painting is really starting to come to life, right? Even though these are pink right now, you can see that the forms are really coming together. All right, so I'm just taking my time here. Our classes that we do monthly, they um, they typically run an hour and a half to two hours. So tonight's, we're, we're gonna go over the hour and a half, but we usually try to stay close to an hour and a half as possible, just for the sake of time. Um, some people will keep painting for like until two hours or you know on their own. Um, so always just kind of go at your own speed. Again, the recordings are very helpful from the team. So what I'm going to have you do is as you do one coat, the, the underside of these flowers are going to be a little darker. So darker meaning like reds. And the top side of these flowers are going to be a little, have some, some lighter tones. So I'm just going to slowly bring in my reds as a second coat to some of the underside of these flowers. So on these petals. And I'm gonna bring in oranges on the tops. So the oranges are gonna highlight like where the edges of the petals are. So you can play with where you put your red and where you bring your oranges in on where you want your petals to be, which is really fun. And if I do, you could do both at the same time if you wanna feel a little, little artsy, you can kind of mix an orange. Look at this, and you can bring in an orange if you want. I'm not gonna do that, but I'm just, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of red next on the underside of these. Now, if your pink is still wet, just wait. But if you wanted to come in and add in, this is where you we're gonna be, you can be partially, you know, abstract. You could fill in just most of these poppies with red, like that's fine too. And just put the orange on top. Like if that makes you feel more comfortable, look at that. I'm just bringing more red in to most of this flower. You can leave a little bit of pink here and there if you wish. That pink undertone it will add some nice lighting underneath, but just doing a second coat with a little bit of red. And you can figure out where you might wanna leave a little bit of extra lightness. But you can't really mess this part up, I promise. <laughs> but it's all just progression, right? It's a progression 
of our flowers and our layering. And the oranges and the yellows on these flowers are really going to make them pop. So these are red and pink poppies. So make these kind of any, the base tone is really important. So if you want them to be nice and red and pink as a base tone, you could just paint the whole flower, right? We use the white and the pink to cover up some of the green, but you can see how it's really coming together. All right. And I'm gonna let these dry because I'm using quite a bit of paint here. And we don't want colors to get mucky. It's really important that we are patient as artists and we let things dry and we come back to them. And believe it or not, there's another step that we can do um, to, to let our, these big flowers dry. Lots of steps. So um, one of the things that we can do while these red ones are drying, before we do the little poppies in the middle, which some of you might've already started that, that's okay, is we can do some of the, the green stems, green and blue stems. Now I had a question on how to make orange. Um, orange is yellow and red mixed together, but it's just a little bit of red mixed with yellow. So you can play with that. But folks can grab, before we do the little poppies, I'm gonna have you add grass blades in. And I just want you to find a small brush of choice. You can do the stems. And I'm gonna do bluish green. You can make it a little more blue. If you wanted to make it a little darker, you could bring in a little bit of black. But I just have a little bit of that bluish green here. And for me, it does need to be a little darker because it's just gonna blend into the background. So I'm gonna put a tiny touch of black on my plate. Whoa, way too much black paint. You do not need very much black at all. All right. So you can just mix, and I'll show you my color here so you can see it. I just brought in a little bit of black and look, it gave me just a really nice, just a slightly darker tone for this of this background. And I can use this for my stems. So I want you to paint in your stems. And for me, it needs to be a little darker. Paint in your stems. And you're gonna do some grass blades and lots of different colors kind of coming up. And I want you to use a tiny small brush of your choice. So we're just starting to kind of ground these poppies into our field. And there's a lot of detail in this painting tonight. So that may or may not surprise some of you, but I'll show you how to fill it in pretty quickly if anybody's time crunched. So kind of grounding these big flowers first is a good thing. Jeff, thank you so much for being here. Hope to see you in the future. I definitely encourage folks to sign up, invite a friend maybe for our next class, more the merrier. So glad that everyone's here tonight. If anyone has any questions, I'll just hold up this paper really quick with my contact info on it. If anybody wants to take a quick picture, my email is on here. It's Megan at paintandsipvt.com. And then Patreon is another great way of getting a hold of me. This is where I have additional classes. Um, and there's a great app with like a great art community that we are, we all paint together and um, it's really fun and affordable. So if anybody wants to take a picture of this to get in touch, if you have questions around supplies or future classes, even I'm happy to share those AARP resources. If you miss them, don't hesitate to reach out. Okay. All right, so I am just filling in these flowers, stems, and I love this dark green. It is so beautiful. And with this dark green, I'm also going to put in some like random kind of grass blades, just kind of like tucking up and in. So with a little bit of swagger, use your hand and just add in a few of these grass blades. You can even dip your brush in a little bit of water. Spin your brush, do a little bit of paint management and add some grass blades because we're going to be tucking those poppies in here. Add some grass blades, maybe up in here in between some of these poppies. We're going to do multiple colors. So we're going to do some blue ones too. But you can see I'm starting to fill in this space a little bit. I'll get a little creative here. I'm mixing in a little bit of blue. Look how pretty this is going to be. Ooh. 
baby. Look at this blue with the green. So pretty. So you can pick and choose on how you want to fill in like the grass like texture here. Again, a little water on your brush. I'm going to do like two or three kind of colors of grass blades just so this field looks dynamic. I'm using a really soft hand. See, I'm kind of layering them in here because we're going to put poppies, little poppies all on the top of this. So it's going to be good to have some of that like grass like texture in the background. But to have these lines nice and thin, you can use a little water on your brush. You obviously want to use a small brush with like a nice fine point. You can go behind these poppies. I'm kind of alternating between like that darker green and a little bit of a bluish color. It's so pretty. You're gonna know when you have enough. You could also go with like a, a true grass green as well. I'll show you what that looks like just so you can see it. Grass green is like yellow and blue mixed together. More yellow, right? So let me show you what a grass green looks like just so you can see it. And that's another great color to use if you wanted to here. Kind of brightens it up a little bit. So you, but that's just, as an artist, you get to kind of pick and choose what colors you want to use. But I'm keeping them all fairly dark because the poppies are really the, the center of the show here. Thank you, Karen, for joining. All right. So I'm just adding in some grass like texture before we add the additional poppies. So for me, that's my focus. You can add the blue ones if you wish. You could you could stay with just these darker colors too. I like the contrast of the dark ones as well. So I'm gonna come in and do some of the dark ones as well. Really like those. And they can overlap that horizon line ever so gently. So I'm using a really light hand. You can kind of come up and overlap. And we're getting this detail in now so we can put all those pretty little poppies on top of all of it. So Megan, so someone is asking if you use the white for the highlights on the stems. I haven't yet. Um, I'm not, I am doing a light, light yellow as the highlighting on the poppies, but I'm not going to be doing white highlighting on the stem. I may use like light yellow as the choice tonight. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I missed that. And you can add in a little bit of like this undercarriage of this dark, like the green on the underside of the poppy. That's really pretty. I love poppies so much. I've tried growing poppies. If anybody has any favorite poppy varietals, you put those right in the chat because I would love to hear if anyone has any favorite poppy varietals. But poppy is such a beautiful flower. They just kind of pop up when they want to. I was given seeds once and I just like, I really want to grow more of them. <laughs> so if there's any poppy experts out there, you just send me all the details so I can grow beautiful poppies this summer. That would be thrilling. Mm -hmm. So selfish of me, but poppies are so beautiful. All right, so um, there are lots of brands of brushes out there. Um, I couldn't even start to tell you like which one you should buy. I have had terrific luck with um, just really basic brushes. Um, let me see what the brand, I use so many different brands. Let me see what I have here. So this is a really, this is like a cheap brand, but it works for me. Um, I, I do sell supplies as well. Uh, you can get supplies anywhere though. Let me see what other brands I have here. Yeah, that's the brand I have at the moment. But, but there's, you know, the Arcteric, there's so many brands. Um, I'm gonna keep us moving though due to time. So you, I'm happy with the amount of grass and texture I put in. I put in some of the green color. I put in some of the dark color. 
I like that. I'm going to keep it simple for tonight. Um, I'm going to put in some more poppies next. So I'm going to grab a small brush of choice. And there's two more sizes of poppies I'm going to add just to keep us moving. Um, there's like medium size ones and then there's like little ones. I'm going to do more little ones and medium size. But the, the colors I'm going to do next are like orangey pinks. So kind of play with your colors and you can pick and choose here. Um, but these are fairly abstract in form. So I'm just going to start just to kind of layer in maybe different sizes and shapes. And I'm just going to start to kind of plunk them in. They can be rounded on top. They can be big or small. I'm going to be, I'm going to do some like tall and skinny ones. I'm going to put some other ones in. I'm just going to, I'll be a little abstract to the eye. Some can be bigger, some can be smaller. This one maybe looks like a little bit of a heart. That's kind of fun. Um, I'm going to do oranges on tops of some of these after. So we haven't done any oranges yet. The reason I'm, I'm doing like a pinkish color first because the orange will stand out on top of the pink. So we talked about acrylic drawing. Play with your shapes here. Your shapes can be rounded and petal-like or they can, they can be different forms. It doesn't matter. But I do some big ones and I do some small ones. And that makes it look like a natural field. So sometimes being abstract can be hard. Just consider doing some tall and thin forms and then try doing like a, a, a double leafed kind of poppy. And then, then just do a couple of dots nearby. So it's like a little bit of a while, like other poppies are forming nearby. So you kind of have to be a little dreamlike when you do abstract flowers like this. <laughs> so I just did random little dabs. I call that an abstract flower. It's pretty fun, right? <laughs> So let them dry, right, as you go. And we're going to bring in orange. And you can bring in secondary colors. But just try to do some big ones and some little ones. Be a little Van Gogh-like here. And leave some space in between. See how I have, I kind of put them in that green space. And there's a little, there's green in between. So I can see the field behind. For me, that was important. And you can put some kind of above your horizon line, too. Like up here. That's okay for you to put them up there above your horizon line. Kind of continues your eye a little bit. I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm telling myself accountability in front of all of you. I'm just going to stop. <laughs> Let that dry. Okay. I'm going to let it think about itself here. I'm going to let it simmer. We want it to dry because we're going to add in beautiful oranges next. And who can imagine, see those beautiful oranges up on the top? We're going to bring those beautiful oranges and yellows down into these flowers and it's going to tie everything together. Okay. So while those little babies are drying, we can add a little bit of black or a little bit of a dark, dark green to for those poppy centers. And this is a little bit of, you know, your own destiny here, but I have a little bit of black and on my brush. And for me, the center of these poppies, they could be little dots. You can decide. I'll bring this here. They're kind of on the lower side and you can basically figure out where you want the center of that poppy to be. They can be little dots. You can have it as like a little bit of a line. I'm just doing like a textured center. See that? And you could even outline like the bottom of the poppy with a little bit of this darker color. This is your contrast. So for some of these flowers, the big ones at least, you can have centers, black centers for your poppies. You can pick and choose what you want and where you want to put them. So Megan, people say that they love your approach to the poppies and that sometimes flowers intimidate them, but you've helped them to kind of figure out how to do them. Oh, oh, nice. Thank you. And you know what? There are so many different darn ways of painting flowers. 
sometimes you just have to look at your inspiration and just see how how you interpret them. Think about the composition. Think about where the colors and the placements are. Wait till we add in this orange. They're going to be so darn cool. Um, so I, you really just kind of take each flower for what it is um, based on how you interpret it as an artist because everybody's going to interpret it a little bit differently. So again, you can use this dark color to kind of grab a hold of like where the poppy may meet the, the stem, right? Your stem can be dark in contrast or even outlined. You could do a single outline for your stem for a dark in contrast. You don't have to outline the whole stem. So you can play with that. I'm just going to do a little bit. You don't, all your poppies, even in the distance, don't need the black. But if you want to tuck it in here or there, you could. So I'm not going to do any more black because all those little guys in, in the distance are, um, they're just going to be colors. So we're not doing too bad on time here. I'm so glad that folks are having fun. All right. So whenever you are ready or you're happy with the base color of your poppies, I um I want you to go for your oranges next. So your oranges are going to help create depth for your poppies. I want you to use an orange that you have up here so it ties in and it matches. Now this is an accent color to your poppy. It's going to add the it's going to add the the brightness or the reflection of the poppy. This is where the sun is hitting the poppies. It's kind of giving a little bit of a glow. I'm going to use an orange. So I'm going to find a color. Just pick an orange that you have. If you don't, if you need to make a new orange, you can. Orange is yellow with a little bit of red. And I'm not going to add too much of it, but I'm just going to add a little bit. And if it's too orangey, you can always mix a little bit of red in to like kind of calm it down a little bit. <laughs> like this is way too bright. So I'm kind of making it more of a little bit of an, of an orange color. And I'm not going to add a ton. I'm just, I'm going a little bit of an abstract approach. So maybe pick a little, like a leaf or two. And just add a little bit of orange. So, because I want the poppies to stay um, this red color, but you can play with how you kind of blend it in. So you could do a little bit of dabbing, right? Um, just be open-minded to how you bring in this orange. And it doesn't need to be on all of them, but I'm just kind of picking, I'm starting with the big ones first. And I'm bringing in a little bit of orange. And we'll do some outlining after, which is really going to blow your minds, um, which will be really fun. So kind of pick the top side of some of these leaves. Bring in a little bit of orange. You don't need to do it all over. I'm just doing it a little here and there. And if you feel like you bring in too much orange, just go back and grab some red or some pink. That's a really pretty example right there. See how I brought in some oranges, but I brought in a little bit of red to kind of tone it down. This is where as an artist, you can be playful on how you blend these colors in. And they're wet, so it's okay, right? But you can see how it's starting to pick up on the brighter colors in the sky. And you could spend like, ladies and gents, you could easily spend <laughs> like an hour playing with this. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna do that today. Um, and this 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 poppy that's hanging down from the sky, like upside down. I'm gonna put this orange on this outer edge. Look how pretty that is. Maybe use a little bit of pink and red to kind of help blend that in. You can even use your finger to smudge. We do lots of smudging in these classes, which is really fun. Look at that. I'm kind of I softened that whole edge. See the glow off of the edge. Really pretty. And again, you can reference that inspiration. Oops. My light just went off. One second. <laughs> you can reference the inspiration. For um, where you might want to put additional colors. But see that beautiful glow I just did on the outside of that one? 
And this is just an orange. So we're going to do a little bit of a special glow factor in a minute too. This is really going to blow your minds, this, this next step. So anywhere you want to add in this orange, you can do that for all these little poppies in the distance too. So um, for me, I might just do like a little smudge of orange here or there, maybe on the outline of some of these flowers. You can decide where, um, for all these little poppies in the middle, some may be pink. So if you want to put a little bit of red on some of these poppies, mm -hmm. you can to add a little contrast, right? You can be as detail oriented here or as um, as abstract as you wish. So I'm just coming in here. I'm adding a little bit of red, a little bit of orange on some of these poppies. I'm going pretty abstract with these forms here in the middle. I, I'll probably spend a little bit of time after class just kind of refining some of this. But I'm, I might make a little bit of a darker red and just kind of round out some of these poppy shapes. But the dark and light contrasts are something we play in all of our classes to add depth and character. And this is the details where you really wow your friends, you wow your partners saying, wow, you did that. And it's because we just took a little bit of time. We started with those base coats, but then we add those light and dark principles to create depth of an object, right? We started with the pinks and we're adding in reds. And that oranges are really what's bringing in the reflection from the sun. And that's what we can see, right? It's quite pretty. So this is where you can do as much or as little as you wish with your painting. There's one more wow factor I'll show you before we wrap up. And then I will put my contact info out again so folks can take a picture of that if you have any additional follow-up questions, but that will be available in the recording as well. So the wow factor that you can consider that I really think is just gonna drive this whole thing over the edge is we're gonna do a little bit of outlining with an orange, a lighter orange. So I'm gonna use a small brush of choice. This is where you have a little patience, but it's gonna be really beautiful. So I have this orange color here. And on these big flowers on the bottom, I'm gonna do some outlining. Look at this. On the top side of these flowers, see this? It's a glow on the edge. You can make this as bright white or as orange or as yellowy as you want. I'm playing with the color here but you're just gonna dance along the edge of this poppy. And it's basically capturing and ref the edge of the flower. I'm gonna do it just kind of on the top edges. You're not gonna do it along the bottom, just along the top edges of the flower. See how that gives it a beautiful glow? Like you can see the sun shining on the backside of this flower. You're gonna do the same thing on the top edge. So beautiful, so simple. This is optional, of course. I'm not gonna make you guys do anything, <laughs> but love, love, love this. You can bring it down a little bit if you want to for some of the edging. If anyone has any follow-up questions, I also always love to see your work. So if anybody wants to email me your work, um, if anyone joins the Patreon community, there's a great place where you can post your artwork and you can share it with us. Um, and I know the AARP friends love to see it as well. So anything you send me, I may send a little collage to them so they can see and be so proud of all the work that you did tonight in our creative class. And again, we wouldn't be here without our friends at AARP New Hampshire. So a uh, big high five and a big thanks for them for having the class tonight. And allowing me to be here to give you all an opportunity to practice your creativity, unwind, and have some fun. So Megan, you're getting lots of thank you. Some people are having to leave, but they feel okay. so beautiful. 
Thank you. I'm so glad everybody's having fun. I'm just dancing around some of these big flowers and I'm going to wrap it up. So um, if folks have any specific questions, please let me know how I can help you. But most importantly, I hope you enjoyed yourselves tonight. This is just a little bit of a final touch. And I'm just using just the tip of this brush, just these bristles. And I'll probably do, you can do a little bit of um, this lighter touch on some of these in the distance too. So just to show you, you can use the tip of the brush just to do a little bit of a glow on some of these in the distance if you wish. So just maybe on the tip of the one of the petals. Again, don't feel rushed, but you can come in and play with that. But you can see how I put a little bit of that in the distance here too. But I wanna thank everyone for being here. I know some of you might have to leave soon. I'm just going to finish up some of this detail work. Answer any questions. But you can see a little bit of that light highlighting really just brings it all together. And what a beautiful piece that we have tonight. I'm so glad that folks enjoyed themselves. Um, again, I'd love to see your work if anybody wants to shoot me an email. But hang your work with pride. Be sure to go invest in one of those frames and show off your work in your home. Maybe you give it away as a gift. Maybe you be, you're so in love with your work, you don't want to give it away. That's always okay, too. It's always good for you to appreciate your work on your own. That's just beautiful. But you can see how this is all the colors tie together. And that's really why we're here. You know, it's fun to, to be intentional with our colors and choices and um, I could certainly spend uh, more time, but if I keep it on a simple frame, you can see how nice this came out. But again, a big thanks to AARP New Hampshire for having us. Uh, be sure to sign up for our May 8th class if you wish and um, reach out to me with any questions. I'll put my contact info out again right here. If folks want to take a quick look, maybe take a picture of it, reach out. If you want to share your artwork with me, I'd love to share it back with the AARP team. And I want to thank you, uh, Ashley, Mary, and Linda, for being a part of tonight's class, helping us with all of the operational pieces. And um, I hope to see everyone again soon. Okay. All right. People were asking for the recording, so I'm putting that in the link again. Great. All right. Everybody have a wonderful night. Again, Linda and team, thank you so much for um, all your help and your support. Thank you. So many folks here. I'm so glad we had such a great turnout tonight. And I hope to see you all again in May. So be sure to sign up and save that date. May 8th at 6 p.m. Thank you, Jenny. Oh, great. Jenny was here. Woohoo. All right.